We ended uh, table toppers on game week one, first day, bro. This Stop topped the count, the count in right? my head. He might just be on a Fabinho Casemiro arc because he hasn't played in one season. Club is too funny. You know, Abramovich, they were not funny, they were scary. Hello, 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 and welcome to a new season. Football is back, Premier League is back, the back forecast is back. Great to have everybody in the house tonight. Uh, we have the usual suspects and we're going to go over the first round of games from the Premier League this time and also cover a new interesting part. We're going to do some FPL stuff for you guys. So stay tuned in and let's just dive right into the games. I'm going to start with the first curtain raiser of this game for this season. It's the United versus Fulham game. Nihal, what do you think? Uh, what are your thoughts on the game? What are the thoughts on Ten Hag's event so far? We ended uh, table toppers on game week one, first day, bro. This Stop topped the count, the count right? in my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No I, shame, I, bro. No shame. Friday, Friday night, I dreamt of the Premier League Cup and I had facts to back it up. AJ, can you say that, bro? You can say that before the season, maybe, because Arsenal is the first club on the sheet. But Dude, it's AFC uh, Bournemouth, not Arsenal. <laughs> AFC Bournemouth? Damn, bro. See, second it's forever well, second, right? AJ. But... Joke, jokes aside, uh, it was a very nervy game. I think uh, there were some sides of improvements from last season, uh, but there are also, uh, you know, the same things that we've seen from last season. But all in all, in a nutshell, I think I'm really happy that we came out with with the three points. I actually want to flip the question back to Wamsi. Be like, did you? Did we miss? I think Wamsi always like has this annoying nagging noise in my head saying that we need a left back, we need a left back. And I think I saw some of the glimpses, but uh, Omsi, what do you think of Dallow in at left, bro? Yeah, Dallow's not bad, dude. Uh, inverted left back. Even Mazraoui can play inverted left back, so it's good that we have that flexibility now. I think it just depends on who the winger is. Uh, this time we needed him, uh, you know, we needed him out there. Him and uh, Licha handling Adama Traore. So I think he did well. Uh, not that good of a threat, but you know, they still had chances, dude. We were uh, in a position, we were in some awkward positions. I know it's the first game of the season, but we were in some awkward positions where, you know, they were like two on one Maguire and Maguire just came through, uh, came through with like with that one. Uh, so definitely feel like there's kinks to iron out. Uh, maybe a two left back prevents such position, prevents such stuff from happening. Uh, like they know when to commit, when not to commit, but. Uh, yeah, not bad for a first game. If only Bruno scores, I think once we come back to fitness and the players start scoring, definitely an improvement from where we started last season. Yeah. And uh, there's no hiding behind the fact. I think if any United fan thinks that like we are going for the title this season, they should probably like wake up, splash some water on their faces because uh, <laughs> this is not the team that will go to get the Premier League title. I just want to set realistic expectations that if we I think we can get top four if our get our shit together and uh, some decent cup runs and then I think injuries dude like I, it feels so weird that I feel like someone at United yelled at Eric Ten Hag for all the injuries and Eric Ten Hag is now like extremely conscious coming out in post game interviews and be like no injuries today that's another bonus no injuries today that's another bonus uh, I want to see like if he's doing anything to actually like protect and prevent some of the injuries at the club but uh, one thing that is really positive is that if everyone stays quit we have more than a half a decent squad to like get our objectives and uh, sometimes miracles can happen and miracles will probably be winning a cup or two but Premier yeah. League, the quality I saw the rest of the weekend, PL the is quality far, is so yeah. damn high. Yeah, it's just unrealistic. But um, you raised a good point. Like uh, from last season, I think what's new this time is that Ten Hag is trying to, you know, control the press a little bit. They, they're not going like haywire on the press from from the get go. It's more of a controlled press. So, do you think that's because of the injuries, or that's because of like just a more cautious approach to the game? I think we the new shape is probably also helping, right? Like, I, because they're play, we're playing a false nine, we are actually overloading that midfield. If you think about it, there are six personnel, including the centre backs, that are occupying that very tight channel, uh, and it's it's different. But I think we are only. You, I don't know if this is going to be his blueprint because he never really had a blueprint, mind you. He was always like super tactical, ad hoc. Like, remember all those ad hoc requests that you get at work? Something like that. Shit. Shit. But uh, if 
I don't know if this is like the new shape or it's forced because we don't have a striker readily available. But uh, bro, what about this uh, new best signing of the season, Joshua Zerksi? Like, <laughs> yeah, Joshua. and the celebration, right? I know it was it was nice. It was nice. Someone said uh, he was trying to control it, and uh, mm-hmm. I just I don't think I don't think that was him trying to like take a touch. It was deliberate poke. Yeah, and that was going in. Uh, but I'm happy for him, dude. First game, first goal. Uh, yeah, we we saw like sorry, go on, go on. No, nothing. I was like it it helps his confidence, I think, and he's very different. He's not like mm. a proper striker. He was actually very deep. when he came in he was trying to pick up the balls if you think about it he was actually like instrumental in that move um yeah but so that helped out i can't help but notice the arsenal boys grinning trying to, it's like they're waiting to like jump on us like go for it AJ, go for it and like i'm so stuff. nervous like opening my mouth because i'm like these guys want to like just eat me on the screen so nira please uh yeah no No, we're just uh, the observing, bro. We wanted to hear all the thoughts and then, you know, present our thoughts. That's this, how a debate goes. This right? is a very uh, different Arsenal mm. perspective, bro. I'm not used to this. Like you guys staying on like your humble grounds, waiting mm. for like some peasants to finish talking. I mean, ultimately, like, oh. the final score was two nil, right? So sorry, one nil, right? <laughs> so if it was if it was one nil on the other side, maybe we would be starting the convo here. <laughs> But yeah, like to uh, be devil's advocate, I personally don't think there's uh, a hell lot of like improvement from last season. I thought it was the same smash and grab uh, sort of victory where things weren't working out. And, uh, then he fixed something, something started working out, and then he got bailed by a new signing. Simply, that's pretty much it. Uh, there were a lot of uh, misses, obviously, in the final third. But then that's very normal for his teams. It's it's I, I mean, at some point in time you just have to stop blaming the players for all of the misses. Why does this happen only with Ten Hag? Um, and Ten Hag, like outside of the game, is just a weird guy. Like because like he comes out, he says things like, "Don't compare us with last year. This is a proper back four." What do you mean? You just have one difference, which is the right back. That's it. And you had Aaron Van der Sar before that, who is, I mean, good enough. Like I mean, if you can't. play with him then i mean, it's not a ground breaking like you haven't got someone insane at right back right now that, that there's a change um and he feels like he i mean he's gone through a lot of like hardships a lot of uh, um whatever things have been unfair with him last season or whatever and he's come back uh, strong from that it's the same old thing i just feel like the whole <laughs> situation right now is the same and it's going to end up the same again It's, it's a very weird. It's a very weird siege mentality vibe, no? It's like not really, yeah, not really is, convincing your awkward, own group, but you're. Yeah, <laughs> it's an awkward thing, and like he's uh, every fucking game, he's becoming more and more awkward in interviews. I'm not. I can't like. I can't take that. My cringe ma- meter is going max. Uh, when you I see his interviews. You already had one awkward moment with Roy Keane, right? Like yeah, in, in the yeah, post match, already, and this is the first. And if he keeps winning, it keeps getting more annoying. I think, um, <laughs> but I think like next week is a proper team, Brighton, and then there's Liverpool. Next two games are the actual tests um, where we'll see if his team are actually you know ready to perform this year or not. But as of now, I'm not fully convinced. Not gonna lie. <laughs> It's also game week one. I don't think right. anyone's re- really truly ready, but. It's a, yeah. it's a paradox for me personally, yeah. bro, because they, I see the same shit from last season, but I see hope in terms of new players and like hmm. different shapes. New players are always going to give you hope. There's yeah. also a new background staff. There's everything is new essentially, so uh, that's there. But still, it's kind of AJ. Speaking of new players, like what do you guys think? How would you like rate this? Just we had three debuts in in the game so far. Like like we had we saw Delict a bit towards the end. So Mazraoui and we saw Zerks. He was scored the goal. But like Pamsi, like what do you think about each of these three new signings? Just like at the first glimpse of what we saw. Yeah, I mean not for like Zerks announcing himself. Mm. I guess like on his, he was really good for the part that he was there. I saw like Rashi actually making the runs, opening up space for him, and I'm like, oh my god, whose team is this? Like they understand all this shit. The understanding space and stuff now, so it's baby, mm-hmm. it's baby steps. Uh, slowly, I think we have players now 
who understand different things in the game which we didn't have last season uh it was just it was just passion football like honestly we just had to get 11 players on the pitch last season if you think about it like that was hard for us so this hopefully this season starts completely differently to that like no, we're not like trying to be a signed in of players of course zergsy uh looked really good delict uh no pressure moment maguire did most of the most of the job so like good intro for him clean sheet uh i feel like he he knows like the players are not ready masravi got good minutes uh i want to see him against like a proper premier league winger like like a sala maybe like you know like mm-hmm. maybe even a bailey for that matter right uh, someone who's like marauding down always like how does he deal with that physicality but on the ball he's so good like he can do things that arman bisaka can't and that for ten hag ball that is so much e- so much easier if you want to play ten hag ball right just buy him the players that already know how to do this i, I guess that's, that's how that's what it goes, inyas right? are doing right like yeah. only dutch or ajax players yeah and the thing with uh, ten hag team is right just in terms of structures that nihal was talking about basically like when you commit all those like four or five people forward you have like maybe the three players at the back and maybe as akase like right in front of them like, they are the rest of the people left when there's a transition happen like it's called rest defense right in ten hag system the rest defense really needs to know what the structure is and like they need to understand like if they're playing a pacey winger then they drop off defend deep because you have numbers otherwise like yeah. you know leecha is like yeah. too aggressive got dusted once by adama like you see in like awkward positions i think once that you figure that out with the new signings in the in the structure and i think that comes with time we 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 look really good i i think we've signed really good players because they fit well into the system Some, yeah who the fu- i've never said this shit ever as a united fan feel so weird to say that yeah i mean <laughs> yeah um, It's it's a yeah. volume game, bro. If you buy eight players that played under him, then four of them are bound to play like work well. Well, let's hope because I'm still salty about like how how much Anthony didn't work out. So maybe it takes a lot more than just one week. But early signs are good. I like Masrau. I like him a lot. Like from mm-hmm. what I've seen, just one game. Uh, Dilit, I don't know. I didn't see him in the game that much uh, because I think at that point we were uh, we we. we didn't have that much of the we, we we were controlling more of the ball at that point i think so there was a lot uh, a, a different phase in that game but we'll see all right uh cool i think uh, we have a lot of thoughts on the united game but i want to focus on the next game that we saw another new dutch bald manager coming to the premier league for the first time arne slot So Liverpool faced Ipswich Town who were again I think coming into the Premier League after what 20 25 years under Kieran McKenna so that was an interesting prop- proposition two new managers in the league what what do you think of the game Anira what do you think Yeah um I think Arnes Lot is here and from the first look it seems like uh, he's tailor made for Liverpool um attitude wise also very direct in a press conference is very direct in like post match interviews looks like a guy who knows what he's talking about doesn't look like a vague person um when it comes to the game i think he mentioned that the first half is something that he did not like a lot of patterns from previous manager a lot of uh, um you know anxiety of the first game of the season so it wasn't really working for him but he said the second half was more or less what how he wants liverpool to play um and the second half was when you know we we saw liverpool come to uh, actually like uh, look good actually look uh, like they're gelling really well the new squad um and uh, team wise i think uh, jota is really important for liverpool he um, even though he missed like a really easy header he still was a threat and um, uh, and i feel like he's locked down that number 9 position um luis diaz not so uh clinical not so direct he was not as good as the other players um but mo sala like yeah. probably the best premier league player of all time shouts for him um i saw the stat that he scored what 300 goals in 365 appearances something like that which is like some absolutely bonkers numbers and um never seen a player so consistent doesn't matter what system he's playing in doesn't matter what team he's playing him he's just going to first game of the season he's going to come and score 
a goal um so i think j- now that they have like because they have these four players salah alisson van dijk um and um and whoever whoever uh, they have from before uh i feel like the structure is there the skeleton is there and new younger players are going to be added to this uh he still hasn't bought any player yet so uh, transfers yeah. still have to be done team still has to be shaped overall looking really good looking really sharp i i feel like they're going to uh, contend for the title do you do you think it's a easier succession that we've seen in other clubs where you know like after a big manager leaves and a new guy comes in because arnes lot has seems to have inherited to liverpool which is pretty balanced across the pitch and is that one of the reasons why they haven't bought a new player i know they were going after zubi mendy that didn't work out but i think uh, just liverpool's background stuff whenever they're actually looking for a player they want a specific player and they don't go for backups usually um um it only if it's a situation where there has to be they absolutely need someone to plug in that hole then they go for backups but um yeah structure wise liverpool is like one of the best run clubs klopp left in a way that like the uh, another manager could come in and handle it wasn't a termination wasn't sacking it was a mutual decision so it makes it much easier i feel like arnes lord and klopp together must have had so many like talks about the squad about how he arnes lord wants to play and klopp suggestions towards it so overall a uh, smooth movement just like it was from brendan rodgers to klopp mm-hmm. uh, liverpool's always handled these things really well and i think they are going to make a huge signing soon because i feel like they just want to elevate the squad they just they they've plugged everything in i feel like they're going to make a huge signing soon and that's going to be the start of the squad this. midfield number 6 probably probably yeah, that's what they need yeah because they don't trust endo that much so they're yeah. looking to get yeah. in some other player in that place yeah they probably they probably need a really good uh, gravenberg is not you know the end mm-hmm. end goal here um if they get if they plug in with a really top quality number 6 i don't see how that team cannot win the title especially with the attack they have they have bonkers people in attack um and i thought salah is going to like regress not going to lie but just doesn't seem like he's ever he's just as hungry as he was like seasons ago fun over yeah, fun but, fun team yeah. fun fun uh, what's going on there Yeah what about like yeah. uh, Nihal coming to you right like I want to hear your thoughts on this new uh, ex united boy coming to the premier league ipswich like to me it seemed that you know ipswich did give a few troubles to liverpool at the start of the game at least in the first half before dying out but do you think they showed that they are ready for the premier league or is it too early to say I think the first half was decent uh, to be honest I think they outplayed Uh, Liverpool, but that may be because of like Liverpool didn't play well. It's not like Ipswich played. I think I was reading one stat that like ten players that started for Ipswich never played in the Premier League before. Like all of them got promoted. Like that, it's not a team that invested a lot of money. So I think they didn't set him up for proper success to begin with. And he also like gave them a big word of confidence by potentially rejecting bigger clubs, right, to stay at yeah. Ipswich. So. uh game week 1 facing like a big gigantic club like liverpool's always going to be hard um uh, and i don't think we've learned anything from them this week it must be jitters dude like imagine going in front of like you've not been in the premier league for 22 23 years coming back and none of the players know how to play in the premier league how like what the intensity is and playing a a club of liverpool yeah. stature i think it's it's kind of hard uh it's too early to comment anything on Kieran McKenna because the game was all about Liverpool. First half Liverpool didn't play well, second half they just like came and came to came to party. Right? So in second half Ipswich didn't even look like they were going to touch Liverpool or scratch them to begin with. It was just nonsense soft metal football. Like I was reading somewhere <laughs> that like slot is more soft metal football and this is not like hard rock. I don't even know what the how the analogy transpires to football terms but Uh, it's exciting for that fan base right like every club would probably want to be in this dream scenario where you your a, a legendary manager leaves and someone comes in and like nothing changes in terms of performances it looks like that because i don't think they lost in a pre-season game throughout uh, right so they are really high on confidence and to nirav's point they spent 0 dollars 
right and they have a lot of money to go and like dispose and spend they are just waiting for the right move and uh, they i don't see why they can't finish in the top 4 and if everything clicks they could just go ahead and like sustain a title challenge too right this is not like an anges new ball that came mm. the problem with that was that mm. like tottenham didn't have the players to challenge for the title but the core that nirav mentioned trent alisson van dijk and sala uh, and jota and luis diaz too right like it's not like they have not, never been in that situation they are actually uh, were in the place where they were title title contenders their last season they were title contenders for 32 games of the season so i see and they they have money like cuz yeah caicedo the bid went so yeah they yeah. just haven't been able to spend they probably have like a whole ass purse to to spend and they're yeah. going to spend players yeah. don't want to go there though i don't know why maybe it's a city yeah uh, one of our friends abhinav went there and is like there's nothing in this town except for the fucking football <laughs> club <laughs> so so and i totally believe him it's a shit hole of a place like <laughs> i mean there's beatles were born there this is more but still yeah. how many of the beatles are like, still alive <laughs> uh two maybe <laughs> three if you believe in conspiracy <laughs> theories a <laughs> fair <laughs> AJ how's your second favorite football club bro give us a synopsis uh i mean i i am i'm always the biggest skeptic of every team when it comes to football and i first personally feel like of everything uh, in in the world yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, especially united but uh, i mean even liverpool even arsenal I mean, we will come to arsenal later but uh, yeah i mean it's great uh, everything that you said echo all of those things but i still feel like too early to predict people premier league managers are super smart it's not a divisi one off day will not you know people will not let you go you know scot free if it's a single off day and a few injuries to sala or like some other people here and there you never know what can happen so premier league managers take their time to figure your tactics out and once they do then it becomes harder to play the same version of the same tactics that you're doing right now so and plus there is yeah. no marquee six on the market i don't i mean they might have the money but they don't have the players that that they would want for the long term so <laughs> Let's see how that goes. But promising signs, hundred percent, definitely nailed on top four. Yeah, yeah. What a weird league, no bro. Like one, every other manager wants to win, and the manager who won it four times in a row is like, I don't have the motivation. Like, what is happening? <laughs> Maybe I'll get it in the last month. I'm like, wanted to. The guy is like, reached a level well, where he can say anything. Bro, he wants to win the most. He wants to win the most. <laughs> yeah. He wakes up thinking about fun. winning. He yeah, wants to yeah. win at every moment. When he walks out of his room, also he wants to win. Every anything he does, he takes a shit. He wants to win. Move on. Sorry, I just like I just like. I I, I, I feel this is a lot of you know animosity coming towards Pep and City because of what he's done to you guys over the last two seasons. Like yeah, yeah. Obviously, wait, just not wait losing a point. You. Wait for it to happen to you. I mean, he also gave them Arteta not to be ungrateful, right? Maybe that's it his biggest, work like you that. know, master stroke. Like he knew that Arteta will take them to second place. Animation, then... you're, you're muted. By the way, just saying. Also, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> what is yeah, the, no, what does it mean? He gave us Arteta. Like what a. <laughs> anyway, fuck that. Some Anyone. random dude sitting in like, uh, yeah. Aberdeen, Scotland, gave you SF. <laughs> like what? <laughs> doesn't work like that. He was like. Yeah, I mean, but... he, yeah, he was Arsenal captain. He could have gone there, started straight away, but you know. That, yeah, we would have. We should have, sat, we should have sacked yeah. Wenger immediately, right? <laughs> like right there, as soon I as Arteta retired. Bro, it happened anyway. He has to do anyways. something. He has to do something, right? To okay, yeah. coming to coming to Arsenal then, like uh, uh, AJ, come on, like what what are your thoughts? <laughs> like go for it, let loose. Yes, I'll, I'll do the positive. Sixty million spin. down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the positive thing first. Wait, first more than more than that, dude. What a what is this? What a celebration! Like I think we are gonna see the the villain arc of Saka now. Like you know, maturing and knowing that he's the guy. I mean, I mean, little goosebumps right at that moment where uh, sees the team struggling. Twenty minutes, Wolves not dominating, but like at least having a lot of chances. Arsenal, yeah. yeah. Arsenal not really being in the, I mean, not being able to contest the duels and uh, keep the ball, pass it around, and then he just turns up, 
uh, spins the player around and then just shoots at the near post. And that's what clutch players do, right? Like uh, out of out of nowhere, he just killed the game. 76 minute went off in 80th. So don't know where did that Artera came from, subbing Sar- uh, Saka off. And the celebrations. I mean, the biggest thing is the biggest difference probably is his celebration and Havertz celebration, right? You remember Havertz scoring that pity penalty last season. And then hmm. not knowing what to do, where to go. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then compare that to this season. He yeah. he started the game as if he's the main man. So, uh, did the celebration, went to the... Uh, we have that, uh, you know, aura around him. So, everything great. I think Raya, White, Odegaard left left off where... Uh, started where they left off last season. Uh, Saliba wasn't up for it. But again, it's, it's like down to rustiness. I have a few players where... I feel like I'm a little worried about, but let me switch on to Nira for the positives first. Uh, yeah, thanks, bro. I, I really <laughs> didn't want to say any negatives, though. Uh, <laughs> dude, like Kai Havertz, I'm just Saka. I know, like I knew that, like he's he's that guy. He can he can do that. What he did, um, he does that all the time. Uh, but I didn't expect that inner post finish though. Like that was yeah. just like like uh, even like a little ridiculous for me also. Usually he like curls it on the other side or something like that. And the when the defender is right that on the edge and he's approaching it, Saka has, has this weird like double step that the defender doesn't even come towards him. Something mm-hmm. the defender is confused. What the hell am I supposed to do? Yeah, it was Salah esque. Uh, yeah, Salah is the closest. Salah is the 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 bar that I see Saka reaching. That's where that's where I see in the future consistently scoring that many goals. Uh, that's where I want Saka to be. Uh, and I think he can do it, dude. Like this is this like every season this guy raises his level. Every single season. I haven't seen one season uh, that he's been better the previous season. He's always better the next season. Um, and I think the part of that is just because he works so hard on so many things, his finishing, his dribbling and everything. And he has Arteta, he has people around him to tell him. He also has a really good head on him. He's not a, he, I don't see him anywhere out partying. I don't see him doing, you know, last year he went to Nigeria for vacation. So, you know how that goes. Uh, he's a humble, you know, humble guy. And I think that's important. I feel like that's important in football these days, because uh, like Hendrik's gonna go to shit. If Hendrik becomes big in football, I like I swear to God, it's not happening. Uh, even the Lam- uh, even Lamin Yamal, I don't know. Like I see signs of like um, arrogance there. But yeah, I'm digressing I think, hard. Yeah. No, <laughs> I think like yeah, it it's a bit of a digression, but yeah, it's it's like. Everybody's looking for that next big thing ever since Ronaldo mm. and Messi that rivalry yeah. happened and mm. they're looking to I don't like think the next big thing people. is going to come. Yeah. I don't think it that level of like uh, uh, superstardom is going to come. It's just going to be functional really good players. The Saka on the eye is not your Mahare is or not your you know uh, he's mm-hmm. more like Salah he's functional. He's going to give you the efficiency that requires that you require. And if he if he's in your team trust me guys like when he's in your team, you absolutely love him. Like, to bits. Like, even Vamsi was saying that day, if I, like, just give us Saka. If there's one player I want from Arsenal, it's going to be Saka. No one else. Like, although there are some players who you could take, who would, you know, be better in your team. Maybe, like, functionally. Uh, but still, Saka is just absolutely uh, amazing. But, but tell me, like, Arsenal have one of the best defences in the league right now. You also added your Calafiori couldn't play yeah. but still he's one of like a good signing for you guys you have a pretty set midfield probably can do with somebody better than party but overall your midfield is set do you still feel that in attack what you have right now is enough or like Saka Havertz and Martinelli or do you really think this is going to win you the Premier League I mean uh, AJ go ahead I think that tees up into my main concern for the season. I genuinely believe that we have absolutely no uh, like fears of not finishing in top four. I think a plane needs to crash with all the players in it for us to not finish in top four. That's why that never happens. But but, but that's uh, not the you goal, could have said right? anything, bro. Yeah, yeah, but like you had to say say that <laughs> anything food poison. Yeah, food. But, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but 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 I think I have three three issues with Arsenal right now. I think first of them is party, obviously. And I feel like he might just be on... Okay, let me preface it by saying that party needs time to get up to speed of the game. So, it might yeah, just be on he, he, yeah. I mean, usually in the summers, 
like you know ghanians have a lot of jollof rice yeah, sometimes yeah. it needs so, a, he needs a little bit of time he needs yeah he's still digesting he's he's still digesting them yeah, but yeah. on the flip side he might just be on a fabinho casemiro arc because he hasn't played in one season and tactics team evolve past certain people and the problem with that is we can't take a half pay party because if we are paying party and rice then rice cannot just simply cannot cover for party's sloppiness just because of the sheer fact of being a 6 versus an 8 and if you're playing rice as 6 then we i don't know this marino guy maybe he's the solution box to box midfielder and if he is great where rice can play at 6 but if he's not then we i personally feel like we lack creativity in the midfield and that mm. stems that kind of like forces our left side to still be dysfunctional again mm. prefacing that by saying that it might be solved by timber or calafiori who might make uh, you know those inroads from the defense it might and... also be solved by party coming to that level again right because he's yeah, yeah no, no, no. exactly exactly 100% 100% pa- party But... like 100% is perfect with rice i hope you agree with and that and 100% 100% my whole worry is And again, that's what I'm saying. It's not a big thing, big red flag, but it might. I hope it doesn't play out the way I mm. fear it might. Wherein party is a Fabinho of to, a last last season or mm. Casemiro of last season. That's my biggest worry because we don't have. I don't think Jorginho can play against every opposition. So he's a you know fit part player. My second worry is Saka replacement. I think we need somebody to cover Saka. Not the same level, but somebody who can Arteta can trust because Arteta doesn't trust Nelson. and we have seen that time and time again he's a great player but arteta just doesn't trust him in when it comes to the uh you know main end of the season and my third worry which is i think more than anything else is i think i'm seeing the same old arsenal again uh same tactics same kind of small problems where we'll blow away 15 out of 20 teams but those 3 4 teams that have been our uh like you know pain points will still be our pain points and for that i feel like we need a marquee signing where in like who can go deviate from the tactics and be like okay i'm going to do my own thing fucking do what rodrigo did today for liverpool we just don't have that player except for saka so those are my three main worries and i think we're leaving a lot to chance of haland and de bruyne getting injured again as they did in the first half of the last season to be in the race and i don't think we should so that is my main worry overarching worries after seeing the first game Quickly, I just want to respond to yeah. that. I feel like uh, I'm I I disagree with like your eventual conclusion. Uh, reason being that City lost a lot of players. They lost Gundogan. They lost Julian Alvarez. They lost Mares. Uh, who else did they lose this year? Um, um, well, they only lost. They only lost Julian, Julian Alvarez, Alvarez and uh, uh, you Nobody know else. Uh, they lost. No, they were they going to lose Addison, but they didn't. Gundo went to I mean, Ipswich, but that doesn't count. So. Honestly, Gundo and um, Gundo was last are season. Important. Gundo was last season, not Gundo this season. Last season. Treble season, yeah. It was right. just Alvarez. Anyway, they, they haven't really. They except for Savio, Savio or Savino, whatever the <laughs> hell his injured. name is, keeps changing <laughs> yeah. every every day. Um, <laughs> it's just like he signed for Man City <laughs> and now he's Brazilian. Um, so basically. Big, other than that guy, I don't see that they've signed anyone or they're willing to sign anyone. What's happening with them? And we have strengthened in defense, and we are going to strengthen in midfield. Don't forget that Arsenal scored the most goals last year, right? They did, right? Uh, But I mean, sure. yeah, just just to counter just year. to counter that point, and, City scored uh, most goals and they bought Haaland. Yeah, the that's fine. They, yeah. Okay, fine. But then after that, they didn't score as many goals as they scored when without Haaland, right? They won uh, the treble, dude. We, yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, but <laughs> but okay, fine. I'm just talking about this season. I'm not talking about City. It's a different team. It's a different situation. They're yeah, just a no. different beast. I'm talking about this season. I feel like Havertz is one of the best strikers in the Premier League and in the world. I think we don't think about it often. We just like dismiss him. He's so good uh, in the air. He's really good uh, with the uh, uh, holding up the play. He has a really good attitude. He has a really good celebration. I just love it. Overall, <laughs> he's a superstar, which has been not recognized by Chelsea or anyone else. And he became a meme after you know being in Chelsea. All of the 60 million stuff, all of the all, all of the jokes. Um, but he doesn't deserve to be. He scored 20, almost 20 goals last season. 
he's already started with one goal he scored for germany he was like one of the top scorers in the euros he's done nothing to suggest that he's a flop or he's even like average he's been as good as we want him to be for 60 million he's been a bargain every arsenal fan would say that um yeah. and he his level is rising he's 25 let's say he's 25 years old he can become better and better and better he's just going to become really good and all of those reasons combined i don't think it's too much of a concern even if we don't sign anyone crazy now we should we should but I think it's same I don't I mean Havertz is Havertz I'm nothing against it I don't think our att- starting attack needs any replacement absolutely not I think we need a body yeah. that can make a difference yeah we need a body be, that's yeah. it yeah it that's can be across by saying yeah any yeah. of the three positions it it yeah. can be a forward then Jesus can shift on the right or left but we need a body in any of yeah, those three we are positions. not we Arsenal shouldn't be looking for a needle raiser right now because we don't yeah. need yeah. but needle uh, raiser and, needle mover Uh, but i think yeah. my biggest problem is we are not giving anybody a new puzzle to solve at this moment and by that what i mean is like if you look at guardiola he always brings a new attacking addition where he moves his tactics around that person a little bit through the gameplay they bought doku they bought grealish they bought like i don't even remember who but they bought fifth season before that but guardiola but always does that you see calafiori right you see something like an attacker calafiori is not an attacker you have to mm-hmm. give sure. primary defenses managers you have to present them with like something new that is different mm-hmm. from last season i think we are presenting the same thing this season marino might change it hopefully he does hopefully party just does party things and i'll be fine that's all mm-hmm. i think like one of the points you guys discussed earlier was like we are noticing how these clubs are signing very few players but like very like tactically and precisely selected players like calafiori city guard savinio for the left wing cuz doku was not good enough like for the entire season probably liverpool didn't sign anybody so far and then you have the contrast with chelsea for example let's let's talk about chelsea now um i just read a stat somewhere that chelsea have signed their 35th player uh like like if you go back the 35th previous signing for madrid was casemiro from porto in 2015 or for united it was i think paul pogba from juventus and under Todd Bowley Chelsea have already signed 35 players i think the state of a club is shown by how many different random ways you can waste money so let let's just go on to the game um who, who wants to take a shot at it i would like to say something right before we start the game yeah go 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 se go na ba ya <laughs> Let's go. This is it's never going to leave my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say about the game. I think that pretty much sums and it up, right? It, yeah, and he was he was he was what the first player that they signed of the 35? Was he one of the first? <laughs> Probably. One of the yeah. first, yeah. One of the first. <laughs> Cramp but uh, yeah. I mean, it just seems so strange that you would firstly sing your own chant everywhere. After winning the Euros, then you would include Haaland, who has nothing to do with you in the chant. Or the Euros. Haaland is trebling because of that, and it's poetic that Haaland scores after dusting Kukurella, and then Kukurella gets injured and is just like, is he's he's left the field. That's it. So this is a lesson. Please don't fuck around and find out. Okay, don't watch it. Don't promote yourself so much. Yeah. It's such a narcissistic behavior. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like Chelsea has this <laughs> habit of you know finding these players who. I don't know how they end up winning other competitions. Like you know, look at Enzo Fernandez, and they just get themselves into like this weird state of scrutiny from media and everywhere, and they just don't have any way to look up to it. I think City never, never nearly to got, get out of second gear today. They were missing, I think, mm-hmm. decent amount of players, and Chelsea did have some chances. But I think if they had scored, City would have stepped up. Uh, they have just increased the pace, the the passing range, and everything in the game, and. They would have run Chelsea over. I think, to be honest, I personally felt like Guardiola took Ma- Maresca as like somebody who's like you know he likes and so that so he shouldn't go hard at him. Otherwise, they would have just smashed them out of the park, like five six nil. It literally felt to me like that. Why do you get? And, I don't. That there, there is no. No, he didn't play players. He didn't play anybody. He played like random players. Like I mean, this is the first game of the season. Yeah. Like, to be honest, also, there like, not, not random. random no, never does that. I mean, not random players. No. No, no, I mean he could still play. Dude, Stone. he. he I mean, if he does on. that, then why did he beat us five nil? Like, because like he, knows, he knows. He knows five nil. He knows the difference. No, no, because he hates Arsenal. You know that, right? He hates Arsenal. He's publicly admitted it. 
No. He hates Arsi. No, he said that I What? hate the way the club is run. Like backroom stuff, he hates it. I'll, I'll link it huh? to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he link he it hates to me it. later. I uh, really doubt this is a situation. No, yeah, no, Chelsea. No, no. But yeah, anyway, Chelsea overall, I feel like, yeah, I mean, I think they're just going to sign ten more players, and it'll be fun. <laughs> Someone said five. it's one one five. Five of them. One on five players. Players. Yeah. Yeah. And the moment Kovacic scored the second goal, I, you saw like Todd Bowley just get up and go to the room inside. Yeah. Probably looking to buy another player. Oh, yeah, he Oshimana left. Right? Like early. Yeah, he just left. Yeah. Yeah. Kovacic was the daily. first guy that fucked off from Chelsea when Todd Bowley came. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is. The funny thing is Todd Bowley isn't even the main guy. Like this is just it's just Twitter discourse at this point. There are way more other people. There there's that Baghdadi dude. There are a couple of other people who are in the play. Todd Bowley is just like in the front right now. We some somehow social media has put him in the front. He's not even there. Um, yeah, but because his face is funny as he's American, so it's it's more of more jokes. More of a scapegoat. More of a scapegoat. But what what do you think? Like we saw glimpses of Pedro Neto. We saw like you know Romeo Lavia coming back. You saw Caicedo and the Lavia partnership. You saw Wesley Fofana coming back. So like Chelsea have a decent squad on paper. They have Cole Palmer also. You know they just need a like a good striker in place of Nico Jackson. We we saw how Nico Jackson was just all over the place today. But even if they manage to solve that, do you think Chelsea can actually you know make it? Make it big this year. Not even just like top top four with Enzo Maresca going in into this season. Do you think that's a possibility for Chelsea fans to expect? You know, we'll find a lot about Maresca in the next few games. Like this this game overall, like objectively looking at it, tactics were good. Good as in like they were what he wanted to play, mm-hmm. but the positioning and. Pos- Playing players in positions that he should have didn't happen, right? He had no width, but wanted Palmer and Kuku to hold width, which does just does not work. So now it really depends on how smart and how ballsy he can be in dropping one of those midfield positions. I don't know. I don't want to take names. I mean, they know this squad squad better. Like, but they need to not play one of Enzo, Lavia, and Caicedo, and maybe play in Kuku or Palmer from the middle or left eight because. They are the best from there. They just can't. Like Palmer cannot do anything from the wings. He was doing everything that he was doing last season from a left eight position. Like he was coming inside, and there was an overlapping winger, and then that's how he was excelling. And that's that's what Pochettino does. He just extracts maximum out of your uh, like attacking options. And that's why I mean, in my hot takes also, I was like, I don't think Palmer will do great just because it's change of overall tactical systems. So if he can drop one of those big money signings. And make mm-hmm. the team functional, then, then sure they might get, uh, go on to do something. But if he if he's just another Ten Hag who just cannot bench Rashford, then uh, you it'll be the same thing again and again. He's coming Shots out and trying fired, to be right. ballsy with uh, naming players and like excluding them, right? Like I think Sterling, he was pretty bit pretty ballsy, and with Chilwell, who was the vice captain, is like I don't see him playing for our club, uh, like so. I guess if you have 35 players, you can be like ambitious with your quotes and like dispensing, dishing out drama in front of the media. But uh, I was just looking at their wage bill, bro. Um, it's, I mean, it's it's not. They didn't give absurd salaries to the players that they signed recently, but they signed a lot of fucking players. Like they just signed an insane number of players. I don't know bro, what their they strategy is. They signed Tosin Adarabio no, for like. a backup center back position and they gave him like 170k in wages which is quite a Who? bit tosin adara bioyo but no no transfer fee no they signed him on free no transfer fee but and like fuller. the wage bill is still high right it's it's substantial for somebody who's probably your fourth choice center back or fifth choice center back i mean to be honest you spread spread them together right so it doesn't come out to be that much in my opinion so traditionally this is how chelsea have operated though Like even under Abramovich, they always signed a bunch of players, and most of them went out on loan. And even mm-hmm. the team that won the CL was a very transitionary team. Like Tuchel was a top coach, and a lot of, and he had he had all the instruments. Like basically, like too many instruments, and he found the right atmosphere to get the best out of them. And yeah, I don't think they're they're gonna have a manager like that again. To be able to do that, like that Mourinho who would do that again, like who would just get a bunch of people, you know, you give him instruments and maybe he can like make a winning team out of it. 
not many managers can do that and especially when you're like getting a manager who wants to play possession fucking hell bro like how will you build any chemistry between <laughs> any two players like here's the thing right like even at training how can you there's too many patterns how will you know which ones are the best ones like too much it's like yeah too much information is also a problem here right and so, this uh, strategy right of uh, putting players on massive wages i think it's going to be really fascinating watching their transfer strategy play out over the next few years um there's going to be a lot of these expensive signings on massive wages massive contracts who are going to be like liabilities because they are eventually going to flow there are players like i see enzo fernandez right now mm-hmm. i don't see him as a 100 million player at all i think they replace yeah. replace jorginho with a new young jorginho literally worst um too. worst yeah probably <laughs> worst but uh i just don't person wise or football wise <laughs> yeah everything <laughs> everything the yeah. whole package honestly also i, I like i said i think there's going to be a war that's going to come <laughs> this year next gym. year it's going to come it's going to be a war in the gym only bro like literally cuz basically bro. lavia will be hogging the bench press and then <laughs> fucking ogo choko will come and be like bro what's happening you <laughs> saw that Chukka video of chelsea's gym and... right <laughs> that video of chelsea's gym was like yeah. crowded and you know players and have no place the nigerians to... are sitting there hey, we all designed for chelsea <laughs> oh my god bro, but how, like, it's how... funny how brainless it is how how such a pr disaster that they basically sent out the armband with uh, enzo like they could have literally chosen anybody else but they chose enzo it's just so the club is brainless organization yeah. club is hilarious club is too funny it's just it's after you know abramovich they were not funny they were scary like yeah. they were just a like a mysterious organization who were just efficient just winning winning buying you just scared of that dark blue color like just stay away from me yeah uh, but now it's it's comedy it's really fun it's, it's very fun. adding it's spice Fini. to the premier league right yeah <laughs> they were too funny there's some there's some uh, rumors that all of this is just because they uh, they know that they're going to get a two year ban transfer window ban sure but still bro like and, and i'm like no no and i'm like <laughs> it's, it's how like it's going to Yeah. It's like covid they're hogging all toilet paper it doesn't work like that bro it's <laughs> literally that's the problem with quality of hogging. players are mm. and now yeah literally and now they want jao felix and twitter and you know dude the best part about all of this is oh that chelsea gosh. fans have become so brainless following this club that they right now they're addicted to that dopamine of signing players they're just addicted players. Yeah. they're like they're constantly following fabrizio they're like give me more give me more i need more they literally want that <laughs> adrenaline rush that's all they don't care about tactics spinning they don't care about anything else how do you support a club with 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 that kind of like an ethos bro like yeah. it's weird like i can see united i feel like okay there are certain players you feel about you know the arsenal there are certain players stadium things chelsea i don't, I don't know how they still support that club i guess i mean they're going to move to a new stadium right. apparently to fit all these new boys <laughs> <laughs> make two dressing rooms two tunnels yeah 